Press 9 to return to the menu or simply hang Bro, up. Bro, I need to take a mad dump. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, so for those who do not know me, my name is David Sestaita from David Sestaita Productions and in this video I'm going to be talking about five things that bands, artists, and producers should be doing in the stages of pre-production in order to make your song the best it possibly can be. Let's get right into it. What's up guys? So me and my brother Michael, the gracious cameraman, dude behind the camera, we're going to be going to Guitar Center and Best Buy to get a hard drive so I can actually edit this video on <laughs> and two so I can get some guitar strings because I'm going to be uh, ghostwriting a couple of tracks and I need to lay down the final tracks with that. So stick along and along the way we'll be talking about the five things that all bands and artists need to be doing during pre-production phases. So let's get to it. So we just got here to Best Buy and it looks like it's pickup only. I really need this hard drive, bro. <laughs> I don't know what to do! I'm gonna go and try to talk to these people and see how the whole process is because it looks like I can't go in and get a hard drive but I really need a hard drive. I've gotta order stuff online and then pick it up in an hour. So, a lot of people, whenever I show them demos and stuff of my pre-production they're kind of surprised a lot of the time they're like wow that sounds like a completed track or a final mix and master and i don't say that to toot my own horn but the thing is is i try to hold the standard pretty high for my demos and my pre-production so whenever i do final track whenever i do get the final tones and whenever i do do the final mix and master i had set the bar at a certain level and it has to be significantly higher than that. I believe that these five steps and these five mindsets that I'm going to be talking about are going to be things that are going to help you in your pre-production and your songwriting journey. So we are now going to try Guitar Center and see if we have better luck. Bro, I just need two things. I need a hard drive and guitar strings. So if this whole hard drive thing doesn't pull through, I'm going to probably have to, you know, order online, give this a shot. The only issue is I don't know if they have the hard drives that I need because I need a very specific fast hard drive to edit video off of. So we will see what happens. Guitar Center have a mask on and it seems like they're letting people inside so I might get my guitar strings today but while we're out here I guess I'll talk about I'll talk about the very first thing that bands should be doing when getting into pre-production and it's actually more of a mindset than anything else and that step is really just making sure that you do things in context and get things in the ballpark your mindset and your goal during pre-production before you do anything and touch anything should be to hear things in context and to get things in the ballpark. So that's your tones, that's your editing, that's your composition, that's your lyrics, that's your melody. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the best take. It doesn't have to be the exact tone, but get in that ballpark. Like for example, you wouldn't record your guitar and just have the DI playing. You want to, you know, actually have a legitimate tone on the guitar that would be close to what you want. Let's say you're doing an indie record and you decide to use 
electronic drum samples, but that's not what the song is going to be final track. Like you're going to live track drums, but you're choosing to do electronic samples. That's not that's not adhering to the context. So you want to do things in context, context, con 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 context. always all the time because that is your foundation without having that foundation anything you do after that it's just gonna hurt your process so we made it in we made it into the guitar center these what are these boys yeah the baritone gauge Jeez. like those 13s serious, bro. yeah <laughs> got my three boy strings so i'm gonna get one one of these baritone gauge i want to get some 12s too where are the 12s? They don't have 12s, so I'll just get another 13. Yeah, I'm just gonna get two, two 13s. This is what we came for. Let's go. Now I just gotta find out how to get a hard drive. You know what, I'm gonna go to Walmart. Let's check out Walmart. hard drive section, but I'm not seeing anything I need. These hard drives are too slow. They corrupt a lot. They corrupt a lot. I don't have a SATA reader. That's not even a hard drive, bro. That's a DVD writer, my dude. And this is the only solid state, but it's only 250 gigs. Number two of the things that you should be doing as a band in pre-production is you need to be programming your drums. And I know most people already program their drums, the reason why you want to be programming your drums is because you don't want to waste time miking up drums. You don't want to waste time doing all these technical things. Pre-production is a phase to where you're getting your song, you're getting the lay of the land, you want to get to the creative process as fast as possible, and programming drums is what is going to help you to do that more effectively. And with step three, this is probably one of the most important steps but it's crafting your choruses very, very meticulously and carefully. Now, this doesn't mean you have to spend, you know, hours and days crafting your chorus, but be very mindful on the vibe of your song. The chorus is the most important part of the song, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. It just is. Whenever you create your chorus, you're creating a vibe. And you're either going to do two things. You're either going throughout the rest of the song going to reinforce that vibe, or you're going to juxtapose that vibe. Once you have your chorus and your roadmap, then you know which parts can and will fit and parts that can't and will not fit. And it's really important to really, really adhere to that chorus because that's going to make your song really, really stand out. We didn't even get, uh, didn't even get a hard drive. I ended up getting some Dunkin' Donuts mocha iced coffee thing and my brother got the Snickers. Products, computer accessories. That's not what I need. Hard drives, SSD and storage. I'm trying to get a solid state. One terabyte USB type C portable solid state drive. I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy that guy. And cart, cool. Uh, only thing is this is estimated pickup is Friday the 15th and the dude at Best Buy said that they would have whatever I ordered ready in an hour so I'm gonna go ahead and give these boys a call. Point number four would be make sure that you're getting your tones as close as possible to what they really should be in the final stages. Let's say you're crafting guitar tones and you need to EQ something. Don't be afraid to EQ it. Just make sure you get there in the ballpark, which goes back to point number one. Do things in context. Let's say you're doing something like FCP Remix from like Fall of Troy. That's a very, very iconic delay setting. Now, if you had any other delay setting, it completely destroys the context of that part. You wanna make sure that these tones that you're getting are in context of the entire song. 
back in the stew. Back, back, back. Oh, that's not good. Point number five, consolidate, render, and print all of your production aspect effects. Don't be afraid to consolidate and make decisions in your pre-production phase that are final. If they're, if they're good, they're good. Now, these are for effects only. Don't be afraid to consolidate it and make those decisions and create multiple tracks for things that need it. If you have a vocal one-liner, put, put it on a separate track. If you have a radio guitar for one specific part, put it on a separate track. If you have vocal chops, put it on a separate track. You know, don't be afraid to craft these things and, and finalize them. Get what's in your head and put it down on paper. This is all about being creative, so you want to be as creative as possible during the pre-production phase. That way, during the actual production phase, when you're reskinning all of your rough tracks and um, you know finessing and fine-tuning those little things, you have less things to finesse and fine-tune because you already did a lot of the heavy lifting in the pre-production phase. So if you do a lot of heavy lifting in pre-production, it makes the production and the final recording and editing much easier because you have a perfect and beautiful roadmap for the production phase and then you know lo and behold once your production phase has been set up properly and your production phase goes beautifully and you have amazing final tracks the mixing engineer is going to love you and it, it, it all trickles down but it all starts at that pre-production phase whether it is you as the artist whether it is you as the producer working with another artist, if you're going to, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, that phase needs to be taken very, very seriously to have that bar at that standard to make it almost sound like it's a final product without spending all the time on a final product.